In France, President Macron will today urge for calm when he meets with mayors from cities impacted by the ongoing riots. Well, this comes after a French firefighter died fighting a blaze in an underground car park in a Paris suburb overnight. 157 people were arrested, three police officers injured last night as the family of the teenager whose killing sparked the violence called for the end to the unrest. Well, our Home and Security Editor, Mark White, joins us now. Uh, good morning to you, Mark. And it certainly seems, although it's too early to rule out the end of violence, but it certainly seems as though things are calming down a bit. Yeah, but, I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? I mean, we still had significant disorder in a number of communities. Uh, and, obviously, the tragic death of this firefighter who was tackling a, bra a blaze in an underground car park sparked, we understand, by rioters in a northern suburb of France overnight. Uh, he died despite the efforts of colleagues uh, to try to treat him at the scene. Uh, no further information on that, but this has been confirmed by Gerald Darmanin, the interior minister uh, in France this morning, as he also confirmed 157 arrests. Uh, and those firefighters uh, have been, you know, just as busy as the police across France. Last night, again, 350 almost buildings that have been set on fire and around 300 vehicles set on fire. So still significant disorder, yes, on a scale reduced from uh, previous nights. So perhaps some positives to take from that. But as you, always with these ongoing situations, it doesn't take much to spark it again. But Mark, to what purpose, to what end, what are they trying to achieve here? Well, I think initially, after the, the death of this young man uh, on Tuesday of last week, there was anger and outrage at that. It was protests that then turned violent. I think in the days that followed that, uh, word spread and many young people who never knew this man at all um, were out on the streets um, just indulging in yeah. mindless violence mm. and, you know, looting stores. Um, and it's continued and they've been using social media to figure out the best places to go to congregate, to get away from the, the police. It's being fuelled again, according to the French President Emmanuel Macron, uh, by activist groups uh, who, again, he says, have their own agenda, but they are continuing to stoke these tensions. And do you think it's possible to draw parallels? Was it 2011, the Tottenham riots and the, and the shooting of, of Mark Duggan? I mean, is it a similar sort of thing where a genuine, a legitimate outrage actually gets transcended by just mindless violence and, and, and boredom? I think that's a, a key and very accurate comparison. Uh, there are differences, obviously, in <clears> terms <throat> of the community tensions in France where uh, vast... Uh, parts of, of that country or communities within that country, particularly from North Africa, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, those uh, uh, individuals feel that they are second-class citizens, that they are denied job opportunities or in poor areas, and that they are um, racially profiled and discriminated against. That stoked a lot of tensions. But whether it's definitely a I think a parallel with 2011 here is, yes, it was sparked from the shooting uh, of a young man, in that case, Mark Duggan, back then. There was outrage in that local community in Tottenham, but that very quickly led to copycat rioting in many parts of London and then many other communities throughout the UK in the week uh, or so that that, that rioting took place. And that, there were awful scenes uh, back in 2011 as well. But yes, it was then, you know, less about a protest of what had happened to Mark Duggan and much more about just this... Uh, mindless, vandal, uh, you know, uh, violence fueled by social media as it was back then. It was people on BlackBerry Messenger. Remember that? Yeah, BBM. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. All right. Not Thank quite. you so Thank much you. with that. Appreciate it.